In this video, we are going to discuss five chest traps under the Sicilian defense opening. And you ask why Sicilian defense? Because it is one of the most highest playing opening against 1e4. So I don't want to waste any further time. After watching this video, you are definitely going to try out these traps in your games. So let's start. So the first trap, we are playing with the white pieces and we start the game with 1e4. Our opponent plays c5, the Sicilian defense. We play knight to f3, d6, d4, takes takes, knight to f6, knight to c3. So till now, all pretty standard way to play. a6, we have the knight of variation. And now we develop the bishop to g5, attacking the knight. So here black plays e6, the usual way to play. f4, the main line of the Sicilian defense. Knight b to d7. Bishop to c4. Now, after knight bd7, the main move is to continue the game with queen to f3 and the game goes on. But after bishop c4, which is kind of a very tempting move, here the, the most tempting move for black is to play b5, which attacks the bishop and on the next move, black is already threatening to develop the bishop on b7. So after bishop c4, black is like, fine, let's play b5. Kick the bishop, develop the bishop to b7. We say, okay, that's fine. Now we are going to sacrifice a bishop on e6, f into e6, knight into e6. So what's happening in this position? We are attacking the queen, and if the queen goes to e7, we are having knight c7 check and winning up the rook. So here, black plays queen b6, moving the queen, covering the c7 square as well. So after queen b6, we can already jump in with our knight to d5. We attack the knight, and we are also threatening to play knight to c7. So black is not really having many options, but to take on d5. We capture the knight with the queen on d5, attacking the rook. So here, if for example, if black tries to play queen e3 check first of all, nothing is happening, we can move the king, we can get our rook into the game and white is like completely winning in this position. So after queen d5, black is like, okay, let's, let me develop my bishop, attack the queen. And it looks like I'm a piece up and winning the game. But after bishop b7, pause the video, can you find the winning move for white? Okay, so the winning move is to play knight to c7 check. Black king is not really having any square to go. So black is kind of forced to capture the knight. And after queen to e6 check, bishop e7, queen e7, the game is over. It's a checkmate. So this is how you play this particular trap. You sacrifice your bishop on e6. And this is how you play it. It's a very interesting trap. So this was the trap number one. So now let's move on to the trap number two. Okay, so now discussing the trap number two, we start the game with one e4, c5, knight to f3, knight to c6, d4. Takes, takes, and now we have knight to f6. This is also known as the open Sicilian. We, we play the move knight to c3, protecting the pawn, g6. Now we have the accelerator dragon, we take on c6 and now we push the pawn to e5, attacking the knight. And now our opponent is already wondering where to put the knight. The knight is having three ways to go, three squares to go. If the knight goes to g8 or h5, it already looks like the knight is completely passive and it should already be better for white. So here, black tries to play knight to d5. We take on d5, c d5, queen d5. So what's happening in this position? So white is a pawn up, but black is saying after rook b8 that I am having lead in development and I'm going to attack your queen and going to have some compensation against the pawn. We are like fine, we are having a, already a very strong move in this position, which is to play e6. What is happening? First of all, we are threatening mate in one. So black is kind of forced to capture the pawn with either of the pawn, which we don't really care because our idea is to play queen e5, which attacks both the rook and you can't defend both the rooks. So white is already winning a rook and it's completely winning for white. So this was the trap number two, a very exciting one. So now let's move on to the trap number three. Okay, so now discussing the trap number three, we start the game with one e4, c5, knight to f3, d6. d4 takes takes, knight f6, knight c3, and now we have g6. Again, the dragon variation under the Sicilian defense. We play f4. Now after f4, what's happening? What is the idea? So first of all, black's usual idea is to play bishop g7 short castle. So if black is like, fine, let me develop the bishop to g7, it looks like nothing is happening. After bishop g7, we push up onto e5, takes, takes, 
and now black plays knight to g4 okay because the knight is attacked and where will you move the knight is the question if you pull your knight to d7 e6 is already very strong where after takes takes it's already winning for white so you kind of have to play knight g4 attacking like double attacking the pawn on e5 but now we play bishop to b5 check and after bishop b5 if black tries to play bishop to d7 we can already capture the knight on g4 you can't capture because the bishop is pinned up white is a piece up and completely winning the game so here the only move left for black is to move the king you play knight c6 i can capture the knight and i'm still winning an exchange if you play knight d7 i'm still winning the knight in this position so you have to play king f8 but now white is already having a very strong move can you find the move Okay, winning move is knight e6 check. You kind of have to capture it, and now I can capture the queen, and eventually can mate to king f7 short castle, and the king is going to get checkmated, and it's completely winning for white. So this was the trap number three, a very interesting one. So now let's move on to the trap number four. So now we are going to discuss some trap number four, but as we have discussed three traps from the white side, now it's time for us to look how to play with the black side. So our opponent starts with 1e4, we play c5, knight to f3, a6. Okay, we play the e6 with a6, d4, takes takes, and now we play knight to f6, attacking the pawn. Now here, first of all, if white tries to push the pawn, attacking the knight, it's already a blunder. Because of queen f5 check, and we can already capture the pawn on e5 on the next move, and it's already winning for black. Black is a pawner. So you can't push the pawn. So black tries to play knight to c white tries to play knight to c3. And now we play the move e5. So our idea of playing a6 was now that we can play e5 now. And now as the b5 square is covered up, the knight can't jump to b5. So after e5, white goes back with knight to b3. This is the usual way to, for white to play. After knight to b3, we play bishop to b4. Pinning up the knight and also threatening to capture this pawn now. As the knight cannot capture the knight because the knight is pinned. White tries to develop the bishop to d3 protecting the pawn. And now we strike in the center via d5. Takes, knight takes. If you don't take, I can already push the pawn. I can even capture the pawn. Black is already better. You have to take the pawn, knight takes. The white knight is double attacked. So white have to play bishop d2, defending the knight. But now we can already chop off the knight on c3. B takes, and now we can play bishop to d6. So what's happening in this position? It's it's not like a trap, but we have this a very beautiful position where there are no weaknesses from the black side and white is already having weaknesses on the queen side. The c pawns are doubled up. We can already castle up, develop our knight. There are no weaknesses in the black position. It's a basically a risk-free position for black. Black can even play f5, e4, grabbing more space in the center and black is already better. It's very easy to play with the black pieces. So this was the trap number four. So now let's move on to the final trap of the day. Okay, so coming to the final trap of the day, the fifth trap, our opponent starts with 1e4, we play c5, knight to f3, e6, d4, takes, takes, a6. Okay, so we have the Khan variation, knight to c3, and now we develop our queen to c7. This is the usual way to play. We put up onto a6 and e6, covering the d5 and the b5 square so that our queen can't really be attacked. Bishop e3. Now, so now why bishop e3? Because generally this is the way for white to continue the game. White's general idea is to play f3, queen d2, short long castle and expanding on the king side because black usually castle upon the short side. So after bishop e3, we play bishop b4, attacking the knight. Queen comes to d2 and now we develop our knight to f f6. Our idea is to capture the pawn on e4 as we can't really recapture because the queen is hanging. So if first white, if white tries to play a3, we can already take on e4 as we can't take because the queen is hanging and black is already winning in this position. Like the queen moves up, we can capture this knight and it's completely winning. So here white tries to play f3, the usual way to play, defending the pawn on e4. So here we play the move d5, striking in the center already. And after d5, for example, your opponent can't push the pawn because you can ca capture the pawn easily. So if your opponent tries to capture the pawn, we have knight d5, attacking the knight, 
three times. So the only way for white to defend the knight is to play knight to e2, going back with the knight. But now we can already take on e3 and this position is already better for black after short castle as first of all black is having the bishop pair. White pieces are not really well developed. The bishop is still lagging development and black is already better. So this is why capturing the pawn is already a bad idea. So if white tries to play bishop d3, protect, protecting the pawn, now we can already play e5, kicking the knight back and already e, d4. We are winning a piece by force and the position is completely winning now. We are winning a piece and we're going to eventually win the game. So this was the fifth trap, a very, I would say a very human trap. This trap can actually land in your game because all the moves, all the traps we have seen are pretty human, human made, I would say very natural that these traps can happen and land in your game, a very high probability I personally feel. So these were the five critical traps that can help you improve your game and that can help you score some serious points in your tournament games. If you want to improve your opening, you can then study against the Sicilian defense or with the Sicilian defense. You can watch some games of the top players or you can even buy a course on Chessable or you can watch some videos on YouTube, some how to play some, how to play the Sicilian defense or how to play against the Sicilian defense, the usual and the most modern way to play it. So yeah, these were the five critical traps. So if these traps helped you to improve your game, learn anything new today, make sure to like the video, share this video with everyone and make sure to subscribe to our channel if you are new to our channel. I'm going to come up with these more interesting videos like this. So if you have any doubts in any particular opening, just tell me in the comment box below. I'm going to come up with that particular video. So I'm going to see you soon. So till then stay tuned and keep watching One Shot Shares.